Hi, and thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to be talking about protecting your energy and the unconscious mind-body connection. When we protect our energy, we are maintaining energetic flow. We are working with our energy to make sure that there aren't any bottlenecks or any, any breaks in the system. We want to make sure that our energy is constantly flowing and that way our body can maintain homeostasis. Now, oftentimes we develop attachments to things and those attachments create a holding pattern in our psyche. We hold on to that psychic attachment so diligently that we prevent ourselves from actually moving forward in our life. This can even take a toll on our body. If I am so attached to a particular thought, feeling, or experience, my physical body is going to get less energy because my mental body is holding on so tightly. Sometimes it's so hard to let go of these attachments. Sometimes it's so hard to recognize that we are being in awareness and we get so attached to what we want or what we think we need. This creates vulnerability. And in order to maintain stability and homeostasis, we need to make sure that all of our energy is freed up to do the other things that need to be done on a cellular level. Doctors and psychotherapists know that when we obsess about a particular thing happening to the physical body, sometimes we manifest it. This might be a, a condition like metabolic disorder or diabetes or even heart disease or cancer, but it can also be disorders like fertility or even eating disorders. We obsess so much that we prevent our energy from flowing freely to handle the jobs that the unconscious is telling it to handle. Our conscious awareness grabs and grips and we have a hard time letting go. Our emotional brain is stronger than our unconscious mind. Our emotional brain is also stronger than our logical mind. Ultimately, if we are emotionally attached to something, our brains will override every other part of our thinking to stay attached to that particular thing. Oftentimes I work with my clients to let go of limiting beliefs or judgments. Limiting beliefs and self-judgments cause the most dis-ease. My mother died of cancer when she was 51 years old. She told me once never to think that I was going to die of cancer because if I did, I would. She said that after her father died, she knew she was going to die of cancer. Her sister had also died when she was about three years old from childhood leukemia. My mother's internalization of the fear of dying of cancer was enough to help her body create and cultivate cancer. It's almost like it created a breeding ground for the very thing that she didn't want. Now, science can't actually prove this, but we can see it. We can actually see it in many different scientific studies. The likelihood of children to die of a disease that their parents had is higher than the likelihood of genetic disposition to disease. Doctors think that this is because of both the psychic attachment to the disease or disorder and the unconscious projection of fear onto the individual's behavioral patterns. You see, if I think that I'm going to die of heart disease and I eat cheeseburgers every day, I may just die of heart disease. 
Ultimately, everybody's different, but science now shows us that genetic mutations account for far less disease than we initially thought. In fact, they almost feel that cancers, heart disease, diabetes, and metabolic disorder comes more from environmental factors than anything else. And what is the most significant environmental factor? The environment of your mind. Your unconscious landscape lays the foundation for what you will manifest in your life. From the day that I was told that by my mother, I told myself and heard myself say, that is not your story. You will never experience that. You will not die of cancer. And I won't. I know on every single level, in every cell of my being, that that is not my story. So much so that it's not a worry anymore. It doesn't take any energy away from me. When I have a client or a loved one who is experiencing cancer, I have unconditional compassion for them. I have love for them rather than feeling fear. You see, when we internalize things and we leave work undone, our unconscious landscape becomes a minefield that is activated by all sorts of external activators. We misinterpret other people's experiences to be ours because the psychic entanglement is so strong. But when I am aware that what yours is yours and what is mine is mine, I don't have to have an attachment to it. I can have unconditional love for you as a being in a human experience. Ultimately, this is what we want to cultivate. Ultimately, none of this even matters. We're all going to die. We're all going to live. This is a cycle. Like winter to spring, summer to fall, You'll never experience fall that isn't followed by winter. You'll never experience spring that's not followed by summer. The weather might be different. The experience might be different. But the actual season is going to come regardless. Why be attached to it? Let go of all of the attachments that bind you. Liberate yourself and live free. When we live in this way, we can see, we can access clairsentience, clairaudience, and clairvoyance. We can know without having to guess or wonder. We just know. This happens with others, with experiences, with all sorts of things. Recently, I told my husband on a walk that we would see an Italian greyhound. Secretly, I'm waiting for mine to be born. My husband said, no, we're not going to see an Italian greyhound. It's winter and we're on a hike and bike trail. We never see Italian greyhounds here. Wouldn't you know, halfway through the walk, we saw an Italian greyhound. I told him, look, we saw an Italian greyhound. I knew it was going to happen. I'm not attached to the Italian Greyhound. I'm excited for the Italian Greyhound, but I knew it. I got a message. I could read that energy. He said, no, no, that's not going to happen. I opened my awareness without feeling attached to seeing one or not seeing one. And I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, we're going to see another one. And you know what? We did. We saw another one completely different than the first. And some might say I manifested it. Others might say I read the energy. I say I was able to feel it. I could sense it. I knew it was going to happen. Undeniably, unequivocally, I knew it was going to happen. If it didn't happen, that doesn't mean that I'm bad or wrong. It doesn't even mean that I'm wrong. But if it happened, ha ha, it happened. I could read the energy. This is how I started playing with psychic energy. 
reading little things here and there. Every morning, noting what came up for me before I hit the floor. Was there a number, a thought, a feeling? Did I see that number anyplace else in my life? These are simple ways that you can begin to work with psychic energy in your everyday experiences. Don't judge yourself if your prediction isn't right every time. Just note if there's an attachment to that prediction. Does it bum you out that you were wrong? Well, if it does, maybe there's an attachment there. Keep working those attachments and keep recognizing when the universe shares with you what has yet to come.